the three films I've done have all been period films, so the hair, makeup, and costume have been particularly important. You can throw the audience off so easily if the details are wrong. And I think hair is very important in this. If you are doing something in the 60s and the hair is the wrong style, then it immediately takes the audience out. So every detail is important. My first question is to find out how to develop a character or the way that they look is usually by period, first of all. I mean, my, always my first question, because I love doing period pieces or something really stylized, is, you know, is it present day? Is it set in the future? Is there flashbacks? Is it period? I mean, I, I, the whole period process I love. And then second of all, it's just mainly by the script. You really have to read the script and get an idea of what these characters are like. The hardest part is trying to make Kate Winslet look like a normal girl. I mean, <laughs> she's so beautiful, you know, but the whole idea was that you don't want to be frumpy to the point of she's a caricature. You want her to look just like an everyday woman that just she doesn't care what her hair looks like. So, you know, that to us, like, okay, just like a simple, natural, curl look. But to get that, we'd have to dye her hair and perm it and do everything else. It would destroy her hair. She's a British actress, so she's worn a lot of wigs. I mean, that's the easiest route, is just to design a wig that works. You get to the point where you do the big studio pictures, which is a whole different ballgame. I did the Fantastic Four too. Now you'd think a superhero movie, wow. You come to the table with so many brilliant ideas. In the beginning, she looked more like a character from, like Agent 99, Get Smart, but from the period, the original one. She had all these sort of 60s influence, really simple, and all these fantastic clothes. Most of it, along with the hairstyles that would go with those things, <laughs> right off the window, you know, because it's a huge studio picture. And granted, you know, you do your best, you do your thing, you sign on to do a job, you do the best you can do, but it's much harder to try to pull something creatively into that. So as soon as you sort of get them going to where you want to be with it. They're like, you need to tone it down a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the transformation, a lot of times, it just depends on how involved it is. You know, is it a creature? Are we doing a bald cap and a wig and a thing? Or is it, you know, a simple wig for just for a caricature? If it's, um, you know, using your hair and deciding to make you look like a really conservative lawyer. Even if it's a simple character, it's fun. Sometimes, I'm probably ADD, I get really bored really quickly. So for me, the mundane thing is if we're stuck in, you know, the bigger the movie, the, the more days you spend on one little scene. It's like, okay, people, come on, let's move on. I'm ready to move. <laughs> I get so bored, I'm ready to move on, you know. Let's get a new hairdo out there, let's do a new day in the script, you know. So that's the mundane side. And sitting on set waiting for them to mess up their hair so I can run in and touch it up. I'd pick Michelle Gundry's films any day just because they're always so creative and they tend to be really passionate about what they do. It's the beauty of it and thank God you know, people like Mary around doing great movies and um, I thank you guys.